it's me again, Ma'am Ruby. Welcome to the third part of our lesson on reacting to lay value judgment on critical issues that demand sound analysis and call for prompt actions. In the previous week, you learned how to get the different sides of social, moral, and economic issues affecting the nation and relate tax content to particular issues, concerns, and dispositions in real life. So this time, you will find out how to take a stand on critical issues brought up in the material that you viewed. This lesson will teach you how to be assertive by taking a stance on an important subject that affects your choices as a student and as a person. To improve your thinking capacity and emotional health, values that you hold dear will be exposed and emphasized. As a result, you'll be taught how to make choices and take stands on issues that affect your future success. As students in the 21st century, you are affected by global trends that have a significant impact on you as an individual and as a citizen. Change is all around us, and it happens at a rapid pace. You will find yourself behind schedule at times which forces you to hurry. You can be required to make decisions or take positions on topics that have significance in your everyday life in certain situations. So let's get you started in being prepared for these situations initially by carefully considering how you can take a stand and applying them in the learning tasks you will be asked to accomplish this week. So the following tips on how one can take a stand are suggested by Europe, a non-governmental organization in Europe, on their Take a Stand Awareness Campaign for Civic Engagement launch in 2017. So the first one says, speak up. Engage yourself. Make an effort to express yourself honestly and freely. So often, people sit back and say nothing when something really needs to be said. It could be an idea, a suggestion, an observation, a criticism, but for some reason, they don't want to speak up. They may be afraid of hurting another person or looking mean or foolish. So sometimes, it seems like staying silent is the wiser choice. Speaking up can not only help you, but also help others. Do not let the fear of other people's opinions stop you from speaking your mind. Everyone deserves to be heard. The strongest force you can have to change the world is speaking up for yourself and for others, especially when they might not yet have the courage to do so for themselves. When you speak up, do it with an intention, not for attention. There will always be some people who won't appreciate your opinion, and they might criticize you for it. But then again, you just have to go back to your core values and ask yourself, do they matter? So speaking up is an important form of honesty. Silence may seem like the best way to avoid conflict, but maybe sometimes avoiding it isn't the best thing for you or those around you. So the greater good should be the priority. Remember that no one else has your perspective and speaking up can change someone's entire life. Second, tolerate and respect. Keep an open mind. Other cultures and their beliefs must be acknowledged and respected. Support constructive integration and start a conversation where it's needed. We live in a world filled with conflict. Opinions and worldviews, likes and dislikes are as varied as the number of humans on this planet. So to show respect, we have to choose to accept that every human is imperfect, to look past the things we don't like or agree with, and love and respect anyway. We love anyway, not in spite of our differences, not ignoring them either. But we love anyway because in our differences, in stepping toward others, in listening to them and respecting them for who they are without trying to change them, we come closer to creating the more beautiful world we all want to have. Number three, be open-minded. Explore the world, find out other cultures, listen to foreign music, watch foreign films, read books, experience world cuisine, and try to understand other people's beliefs and perspectives. So if you want to be more open-minded, then the first thing you have to do is embrace something that is completely foreign and unknown to you. Keep an open mind about things you've never done before. Moreover, be willing to hear opposing opinions, even outrageous ones, and learn about the worldview of people you don't agree with. If you are willing to listen, to genuinely hear the other person, conversations take place, relationships grow. 
So if your goal is to genuinely show respect to others, even those with whom you disagree, treat each person you encounter with the love and dignity they deserve. Listen to them, not to change their mind, but to learn more about who they are. This will make them feel respected and open more doors to peace than you can imagine. Number four, show solidarity. Show unity with minorities and assist those who need assistance. Volunteer and participate in charitable programs. We are stronger when we work together. So each of us is a part of the human family and we are all interconnected and interdependent. Loving our neighbor has global dimensions. So we must see ourselves in others and collaborate towards solutions. Solidarity is a recognition that we are all in this together and it's a commitment to strengthen community and promote a just society. And lastly, be active. Don't keep your mouth shut. Raise your voice and use it for good. We all have to be good, but that is not enough to not just be good. We must be good for something. We must contribute good to the world. How nice is it that the world will be a better place because of you, right? This is what we call active citizenship. It means people getting involved in your local communities and democracy at all levels. Active citizenship can be as small as a campaign to clean up your street, setting up community pantries, or as big as educating young people like you about democratic values, skills, and participations. So be involved, be informed, make meaningful contributions to society through service and involvement. So those are the five tips on how you can take a stand. So now this time, let's look at the different learning tasks that you're going to accomplish for the week. So in learning task one, you have to study the ads and decide whether you are in favor or against the particular issues being raised. Then answer the questions that follow. So write your answers in pad paper. So there are two pictures and therefore there are two issues being indicated here. The first picture is about materialism. So materialism is the tendency to believe that consumer goods and services provide the greatest source of satisfaction. So it refers to the importance we attach to worldly possessions. So some suggest it is a good thing, like material consumption helps raise the level of civilization and make life better. While others say that it leads to negative feelings like self-centeredness and unhappiness. The second picture, on the other hand, is about pork barrel. It also negatively refers to politicians spending taxpayer money on their constituents primarily to generate political support. So some says pork barrel is important in order to help people in need, especially locally. However, it opens door for corruption. So instead of giving it to people or organizations in need who should have been the beneficiaries of the pork, the budget and the Filipino people's taxes who funded the pork all goes to the pockets of corrupt officials. So based on these two issues, you have to answer the following questions. What is your stand? What helped you decide? What did you use as basis in decision making? If you will be given the opportunity to talk to someone regarding the issues of materialism and pork barrel, whom would you talk to and why? And lastly, what would you tell him or her? Okay? So in learning task two, you need to watch a video clip. So if you're here on YouTube, then more likely you have access to the internet. So you could also check out the video. I'm going to include the link on the description box. Or you could also read the transcription or the transcribed version. So take note of the important points being raised in the video. Copy and fill out the table that follow with details extracted from the material. So do this on your answer sheet, right? So just watch the video or read the transcript. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to play the video here for copyright issues, but you could check out the link given in the description box, all right? Mm -hmm. So to give you an idea, the video is all about the values, American values to be specific, that are reflected in movies such as Spider-Man and Harry Potter. So they mention about the value of achievement and success, individualism, progress, material comfort, and many others. So moreover, they show how 
movies represent these values. So let's say, for example, in the movie Spider-Man, it emphasizes the importance or the value of science and technology. So after watching the video or reading the description, you are going to accomplish three subtasks under learning task two. So the first part is you have to accomplish this table, which is composed of three columns. The first one is trait or values mentioned. Second column, description. And the third column is my comments. So for trait or values mentioned, let's say, for example, we have achievement and success. And then you have to include the description as told by the video. So it says here, people place high value in personal success, and this has always been reflected in movies. The definition of success has been debated. However, society often measures success by wealth, title, and material possessions. And then in the last column, you have to include your own personal reaction to it. So for example, an ultimate definition of success is not possible. The media bombards us with messages that success means having money, power, privilege, or beauty. For me, it means living in alignment with your personal definition of success by staying true to your values and taking meaningful actions toward your own valued goals. Okay, following the table, the second thing that you need to do is to make a stand as to the right disposition in order to attain a better change. So write your decision below on your pad paper. So I'm going to stick with my previous example on the value of achievement and success. So for me, true success means staying true to a deeper sense of purpose despite deviating from a superficial social norm. So for me, success means finding joy in suffering. It means having the courage to peruse one's own journey when confronted by the fear of uncertainty. So in a world characterized by rapidly growing uncertainty, we can try to seek solace in the empty promise of conventional success, or we can choose our own path. Although it is our own path, we need to be aware of how this path connects us to a cause or community beyond ourselves. So living in alignment with our core values allows us to genuinely connect with others rather than trying to gain a false sense of acceptance through status. So in this part, you really just have to make a stand. Okay, as to what you think is the right disposition in order to attain a better change. Okay, and the last one is based on the material that you have viewed and listened to, pick out valid and acceptable rights which can be adapted or enhanced for the preservation of the values mentioned. Okay, so for me, what I have chosen is the value of education. Okay, and my reasoning is that. Getting proper education is essential to achieving more success and happiness in life. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world, according to Nelson Mandela, right? It helps people become better citizens, get a better paid job, shows the difference between good and bad. Education shows us the importance of hard work and at the same time helps us grow and develop. Thus, we are able to shape a better society to live in by knowing and respecting rights, laws, and regulations. And of course, by subjecting ourselves to education. So that's it. That's learning task two. In learning task three, there are two texts or news articles that you have to read. And then in your pad paper, take note of the important details to be able to fill out the default that follows. So the first set, News article is entitled, Three Nurses Test Positive for COVID-19 After Getting Vaccine. The second article is, Duterte to China, PH won't withdraw ships from the West Philippine Sea. Okay, so now, after reading the two articles, you have to accomplish the table. So you have to identify the issue, the speaker's stand, the problem, and the proposed solution. So all of this can be found in the news articles. So for example, in the first article, the issue was that there are free nurses that get infected by COVID-19 virus after getting vaccinated. So what does the speaker stand? The speaker stand is neutral. It has provided explanations from valid sources and mentioned all sides of the story. So what was the problem? Healthcare workers are continuously exposed to the virus. So there's a need to heed the distress call of our frontliners. And what was the proposed solution? So according to the article, there's a call for paid leave if they experience any side effect. They should also be prioritized in the vaccination program and be given enough protection during work. Right? 
So that's for learning task three. So just remember, it may be difficult for us to express our thoughts on a subject because our ideas can run contrary to popular opinion or culture. However, we are compelled to do so because it is necessary and we conclude that our decision is in the best interest of the majority. So we must take a stand regardless of how controversial it may be because doing so results in incomparable transformation. So we have five steps on how to take a stand. Speak up, tolerate and respect, be open-minded, show solidarity, and be active. So for the assessment part, there are 10 items or 10 sentences, and you have to read them and identify if the following situation is reasonable or not. So if the following situation is reasonable, then you have to write just. If it's not, then you have to write unjust. So write your answer on your answer sheets. So let's just try one example. Number one, the elderly are often rejected to work due to their age. So older people are rejected to work because of their age. Is this, is this reasonable or not? Just or unjust? That's right. It's unjust. This is a form of discrimination, right? So just read the next sentences and identify if the situations are reasonable or not. Okay? Good luck! Of course, do not forget to include the reflection part of your module. So this is the second to the last lesson in our fourth quarter and I hope I was able to enlighten you with the lesson and was able to walk you through the different learning tasks that you need to accomplish. Thank you so much for watching and I see you next time. Bye.